This is a really interesting and unusual gadget to take a look at. It's a timer with two sets of light beams and when you break the light beam it starts the timer. When you break it, the other light beam it stops the timer. And this one is for a dog club where they have competitions. The, the dog goes round the course and uh, they measure the time it takes. But apparently it's been playing up. It's been giving them problems. So I volunteered to take a look at it for them. So what we have here, we have green RX and this is really, this is so specialist that this is 3D printed. This is 3D printed. This looks like a piece of plastic uh, square sections of drain pipe, almost like a narrow down, down pipe. And this box here, Time It Perfect Co UK, uh, the top of it, hold on, I'll just pop out. It's a standard case, but they've 3D printed their own top here with the on off switch. When you switch it on, it says timeitperfect.co.uk. Guess that's our website. Start timing. Right, tell you what, I shall uh, set this up. So here's what we have. We have green TX and green RX, the transmitter. When you click the switch in the bottom, footry switch, uh, a red LED doesn't light. This is one of the problems I think they've got with it. Now it's lighting. Now I've wiggled that connector. Uh, I'm thinking, oh, what's wrong with these? It's the curse of battery operated equipment. Is it going to work? Right, tell you what, it, it's lit. So that's this one's transmitting. Is it just transmitting continually? Is it doing anything? Can we see the glow from the... I'm not really sure. I don't really see that. But anyway, that's the, uh, the green transmitter. Here's the green receiver. I'm not sure. I guess green start. So it's little red LEDs lighting. And when you aim them at each other, see the green LED there? It's only when they're aimed properly that that green LED lights. That's good. That's a very handy thing. So I'll put that over there. And I'll get the red one here and put its transmitter on. Noting, if I point the red transmitter at the green receiver, it's not going to do anything. It's actually detecting the, the its own receiver. Oh, actually, is it detecting that? Hold on, let me... Oh, no, it is. It is detecting. I'm, I'm wrong. I thought they were coded to each other. That kind of makes sense. That makes things a lot easier. So that's, uh, that's set up there. Uh, this one is transmitting down here. I will put this in the middle. And I'll turn this one on. It's also not lighting up. Oh, I really have. I think... I hope these haven't suffered too much damage. Right, tell you what, this ain't working. One more. I'm just going to set this up. Okay, and we're ready. So I'm shining light this because I don't think it's backlit. Uh, so start timing. I'm going to press enter. It displays that time. Low battery red. Oh, it actually shows low batteries for the different transmitters. That's quite good. So now I break the beam here. And it immediately starts counting. And then when I break this beam... It stops counting. And if I break this one again to start the cycle again, it starts counting. Break the beam, it stops counting. It seems to reset automatically. I wonder what they use to communicate with each other. Right, tell you what, let's investigate this. Although, to be honest, after trying to get that going, I've discovered the problem with it's not good news. Right, I'll put that out of the way. Ah, and I'll turn these off. And I'll show you what I've already discovered. Lots of little switches. I wonder how much current they'd take. So we'll get the batteries out of this one. And it starts off really well. It's, uh, well, it's simply Duracell. I mean, simply Duracell actually means simply crap Duracell. They've got lower capacity than normal Duracells. And I like all Duracells are prone to leaking, but not as much as this Varta battery has leaked wet. That's a disaster. Let me just wipe that off. Uh, you do not mix batteries. The reason you don't mix batteries, you've seen these warnings about mixing batteries, is that if you put in 
an old battery with about half charge and you put in a new battery with a full charge. As it runs down, it starts reverse charging this battery. When it reverse charges the battery, uh, when that one's depleted to zero, but this one's still got charge, it causes a pressure buildup inside and it makes them leak. So you never, ever mix batteries. And that means, can we see this? Can we see it? Oh, no, it's toast. Uh, the contact in there is not good. Let's see what we can do about this. Let's see if we can fix this because I don't see a spring. I think this this reminds me of a popular Bulgin type uh, connector, uh, battery holder. Right, tell you what, all these batteries are getting binned. Let's see if we can open this. Tell you what, just before I start this, I'm going to pause and I'm going to take all the batteries out of the other units right now, just as a precaution. All the batteries are out. Yes, there was corrosion on others. What a shame. But this uh, happens, it's not really uncommon, particularly for things like this, that they have an event, then they put them in the box and sometimes they might not get switched off properly or they might just store them for a very long time and then when they need them again, they just fumble about for batteries and they can't find the batteries, so they just stuff in whatever they've got. It happens. It's just part and parcel of what it is. Hopefully, it will be straightforward to change the battery holders or at least fix them, clean them up. If it's the springs in the negative, and I don't think it is in this one, it's a very odd battery holder, then that would make it a bit trickier. Uh, so this is sealed. I'm not sure how well this is going to come out. Oh, it actually slides out. Ooh, okay, 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 okay. Ooh, oh, that's neat. That is super neat. Uh, they got a bit of silicon in that for vibration resistance. Oh, help me out, glue should say, yep, yeah, that's uh, that is a standard. It looks like a Bulgan battery holder. Okay. Uh, what do we have? We have the little RF module with the antenna inside of that. Oh, they've cut the top off it. Okay. We've got another 3D printed object with the modulated infrared receiver. And little uh, power supplies. I wonder why they've got two of them. There's the uh, focused LED. That's very smart. Oh, and there uh, is a microcontroller. And another mystery chip. Ah, with the number scrubbed off and they've written R on it. Uh, is that another microcontroller or is that a remote control encoder chip? There's the crystal for the uh, the microcontroller there, right? Tell you what, this is the red... Uh... Oh, that's neat. Look. They've got a... Is that screwed in or is it just... Oh, it's going to come out easily. It's sort of sticky, gooey stuff, but it's not that hard to slide out. What do they suit it with? Oh, that's neat. That's how they're holding this in position. Nice design. Very, very specialist. It's not, you know, it's not something that you're just going to get. It's not a common thing. You're just going to buy them off the shelf. It is like really low volume uh, manufacturing. That's a nice design of case as well. How have they stuck the lenses in? They've got little round discs. They've actually kind of, I think they've drilled in, but only so far. Yeah, and then they've just glued a little lens, just a little clear plate over there in front of these sensors. I'm liking this so far. I'm liking it a lot. Uh, where is the partner in crime? Red TX. I would guess it will have similar construction. So... Little screws coming out of the 3D printed bits at the end. Probably the wrong screwdriver for them, not to worry. I have no regrets. Oh, that's that screw's going across at an angle as well. So, slight misalignment issue, but that's all right. It's going to come out as easily. It kind of like a... It kind of feels like it's... Sticky and then slides out. What do we have here? Another little uh, 
three pin, I think that's a boost regulator. Of course, it's three volts, isn't it? So that's a boost regulator. Oh, and another rubbed uh, off uh, chip here that says T. Is that going to be dedicated? Is that going to be a microcontroller? What about this? Uh, can I get this off here? Looking for clues, looking for clues here. Not really sure. That's a microcontroller. It's an Atmel, but they've they've hidden what this is. LED battery warning. Oh, right, there's a, a battery warning, but they've not actually used it. There's the cluster of three LEDs up there. There's the power on LED. The cluster of three LEDs, I guess they're in parallel. Maybe a resistor each, or not I'm really sure. I don't see unless this has been used to switch the, oh, it's a FET. This has been used, and these resistors have may before those, they are. The resistors are for the LEDs. The FET is being driven and uh, is pulsing the LEDs in that code. This is nice. It's nice construction, especially for something so specialist. Now, this thing here, uh, can this contact be lifted out? That is so corroded in there. That is a disaster. It's got a spring. Hold on. Can I slide that down? That is super spring loaded. Well, that's no fun. Oh, the spring itself is not looking happy. Hold on. Let me see if I can turn this sideways and pull it out. How serviceable would these battery holders be? Or ultimately, can I even get them anymore? Because they're a fairly retro type. This isn't really going to plan. Oh, that's coming out. Ugh. There's a spring. The spring is cruddy. There's the contact. The contact is cruddy, to be honest. For reliability, that's going to increase resistance, which is going to reduce the infrared output and the transmission distance and stuff like that. So I think new battery packs all around. I'll let them know. Uh, I'll see if I can source these first. Oh, it is Bulgan. I was right. Uh, but yeah, I'll let them know about this. Strain relief and hot melt glue. There, this is well made. This is well made. Is that a little programming header? Or is it a test header? Strange angle. Possibly just to get it in properly in the case. Uh, very interesting system. Shame that uh, the batteries have leaked, but ultimately batteries leak. It happens, you know, when it does happen, um, the best thing to do for something as special as this is actually change the battery holders completely because they are extremely corroded and that will pretty much, judge by the look of this, that will pretty much return it to full 100% operation. It's quite nicely made. It's pretty good.